Okay, today we're going to implement a version of the bubble sort algorithm using C sharp. And this is a very simplistic version of the sorting algorithm. Uh, bubble sort is often used as the introductory algorithm because it's simple to conceive of. Here I have listed the algorithm, which is basically we loop through a list of integers one at a time and we are comparing each subsequent uh, set of integers. So if we're on integer number one, we would be comparing it to the value of the second integer. And if they are in the wrong order, we will swap them in place. We repeat that all the way down the list, and then we go back to the top of the list, and we start over again. And if you have n items in the list, if you do this process n times through the list, you will guarantee that you have sorted the entire list. It's inefficient, it's not intelligent, uh, but it is simple. So that is the implementation we're going to do. And in this process, we're going to see the value of using integer arrays in C sharp. So first I need to create some variables that are going to store my list. So it's going to be an array of integers. So we will create an integer array um, here. You can see the square brackets are telling you this is going to be an array of integers. I'll call it, give it a name. So I'm going to call this list of numbers. And I have to um, create this uh, variable. This is actually, when you create an array, it actually creates a dynamic uh, instance of an array variable. So I actually need to use the new operator to create an instance of that object. Um, so uh, I will now say this of new, sorry, number equal to new. This is the new operator, so I'm going to actually create a copy of this list. And it's going to be an int. And here's where I get to declare how many variables go in my list. So I'm going to need 100 entries because we're going to be looking for a fairly small list. Um, and if we wanted to create bubble sort, in a dynamically sized list, we would do that later with some sort of object implementation. Okay, so I'm going to make this program a little bit interactive, so I'll be able to ask the user for a list of numbers to sort. Um, I will then store those numbers in the array. I will then uh, print out the list of numbers in unsorted order. I will then sort them, and then I will uh, print out the uh, results in sorted order. So that's what I'm going to proceed. So this number, int max numbers, is going to be uh, a value that I use to uh, ask the user how many numbers to sort. So I'm going to do that now. So max numbers equal, I'm going to get this on the console. And uh, Scott, I need to convert this into an integer. There, I've got the syntax correct on my. Now I want to uh, loop through and um, and uh, have the person enter these integers in order. So since I now know how many I want to get, and I guess I probably should prompt the user to enter that first. So uh, let's do a console dot the right line, the right. I don't want to get it there. Uh, enter integer. Now I'm ready to read in the values here. If I know how many I want to read, I'm going to do this in a for loop. A for. Whenever we're in a for loop, I create a variable to do my counting. So I'm going to use the integer i. And it's going to start at 0. And each time, I am going to increase i by 1. That's what this i double plus means. Uh, and now I need to actually put in the commands that I'm going to uh, execute when I do this. Okay, so I've picked up my syntax here for my for loop. So this is where my counter variable starts. It starts at i equals zero. Because 
these arrays are indexed by zero. They're a zero index array. That means they start counting the first element being zero, not one. And then I need to be less than max numbers. Actually, I don't need my max numbers. I can just number from minus 20. So my max numbers could be, so say if I want to put in 20 items, so the person would put in 20 as their answer to this read line. Max numbers, if I is less than max numbers, so that means it's going to count from 0 up to 19. That's a total of 20 items. That's good. And then we're going to increment I by 1 each time we go through the loop. So what do we want to do each time through the loop? We want to uh, prompt the user. So we're going to do a console.write. Um, and we'll say enter number. And then we will store that number in a um, in one of our list items. So we'll put in list of numbers, and we're going to put it in entry i. So the first time through the loop, i will be zero. Second time through the loop, i will be one, etc. So we'll count up from zero. So that's going to equal a conversion of our read line. I'm just going to be reading Okay, so next up, let's um, print out the list of numbers. I'm going to do this on a single line. So um, again, I'm going to use a for loop. And I am going to write out this one as a single line. So I'm going to do console.write, and I am going to use one of our formatted uh, strings. So I'm going to do a parentheses, zero, parentheses, space. And then after the console, um, after my format string, I'm going to tell it what variable to stick in this uh, placeholder. So I want to put in list of numbers. And that's a single line of code. So that's a single thing. To make this a little clearer, I can go ahead and put some concerns in here. You'll see that what will happen is it's going to go loop through every single item up to max numbers. This is the number of things that the user entered. And we're going to use this format string in this console.write. And it's going to replace the, the zero in here with the value of the ith item of my array. And it's going to get it um, split. So, and then I'm going to finish my program down here with a console. On console app so that it waits. So let's go ahead and run that real quick and see what it looks like for um, our program. So enter the number of uh, integers to sort. So I'm going to put in four integers. So enter number so I'll say five, seven, three, two, one. So there was in my list. I'm going to print those out five, seven, three, two, and right now it's going to end. So it's doing what I want. And now I want to actually Um, let's go ahead and implement that algorithm from above. So I need to keep track of which one I'm currently working on. Uh, I need to loop through the loop. Okay, so again, I know how many items I need to loop through, so I'm going to do a for loop again. And I'm going to say, uh, call this one current. I'm just going to set it equal to zero so it starts at the top of the list. And uh, current, I'm going to keep looping until current or while current is less than max numbers. And then I'm going to increment current by one. Now, remember when we get, if we, if we um, were to go all the way to max numbers, somewhere later in this algorithm, we're going to want to look at current value and compare it to the next value in the list. 
And since we don't want it to go all the way to the end of the list, because then it would look for the value after that in the list, and it might not exist. So we're actually going to go to current max numbers minus one. So if there's 20 items in the list, we will move current up to the 18th position. So that then when we do the comparison, we'll compare the 18th, or sorry, the 19th and the 20th item in the list. So um, within this loop now, we now going to do our comparison. So I'm going to do a check, and when I check things, I'm going to use the if statement. So if, and what is the condition I want to compare? So I want to see if list of numbers item um, current plus one. So if I'm on the fourth item, I have to compare it to the fifth item. Um, it is less than list of numbers current. Okay, if it is, I need to do something. So what I need to do is I need to swap there. Um, I want to write the fourth item into the fifth item slot and the fifth item back into the fourth item slot. I need to temporarily hold um, that position. I'm going to create a variable to call it temp. And um, so what we will do is we will temp temporarily make pull the value of one of these two in this temp variable. So we'll put list of numbers um, current in the um, temporary. We will now make a list of numbers current uh, equal to a uh, list of numbers um, current plus one. So I've now just overwritten the current value with the uh, current value plus the value that's stored in current value plus one. This is where this current value plus one is why we only want the, the loop to go to one less than the maximum. Um, so now I need to store the opposite back, so I can go list plus one, and now that's going to take on the value of the max. We can now swap these two position values in order of I only do this loop. Uh, so here's my end of my loop. If I only do this list once, you can see what happens. Let's go ahead and do uh, a new for loop, and I'm going to print out my list again. If I copy this down here. I should now see my list printed out in order. The problem is I didn't put a, a carriage return in there, so I'm going to do a console dot uh, right line. That's to give a white space between my previous list and my new list. So this will be print out order. So if I'm going to run that, you'll see one of our problems. So I'm going to put in uh, for the five number. You'll notice that they're not sorted. We had a few things move. We had the two and the six swap place, and we had the one and the nine swap place, but we're not sorted yet. This is one of the things about bubble sort. If we need to repeat this process back here to the top, we need to repeat the above loop until the list has been sorted to n times, where n represents the number of things in the loop. So I need to put all of this that I've just written, I need to put it inside of another loop to run n times. So for int, and now you see something that's going to be a counter. It doesn't really matter what it is, because I'm never going to use it in this particular case. So I'm going to use j equal 0, j less than max number, uh, j plus. And what do I want it to do? I want it to do this entire for loop. Okay, so this loop that does testing and swapping here is now going to run 
pulling this number of times. If that's if you have it all right, you should get a printed out list. So let's go ahead and see if that happens. Pulling five numbers and we'll put in a four, two, eight, seven requirement. And first two, six, seven requirement. And you'll notice four, two, seven, one becomes one, two, four, six, seven. And it successfully So let's uh, go ahead and do this. Let's roll a uh, walk through this one line at a time here. So this time, instead of uh, running the program, I'll step through it. So here we run up to here, and then we put in one, five numbers. Um, then we have to go five numbers. So I'll put in four. Okay, I'll do a little trick here. I'm gonna in after this code so that I can start stepping it a little bit later. So let's see if I continue it there. Uh, four, three, one, seven, uh, four. Okay, so here we are in the beginning of our loop, and so we're just going to step through this a little bit at a time. So you'll notice that execution begins, puts the turn to the zero. See whether we can leave the loop. Here it does that pass. And if you look down here at the bottom, this will show you how um, how uh, watch windows work. And you'll notice that there's this list of numbers. If I expand it out, you can see that list of numbers zero is four, three, two, one, uh, like that. And I can also see that current is zero. So it should be comparing item current plus one, which would be one, and Current, which is zero. See, when I hover over, it tells me the value. So when I hover over this expression, um, I can see that it's going to do current plus one. Correct. So I'll step through that. Um, the condition was true because the numbers four and three were need to be swapped. So if I take the dot, keep stepping, you can notice that the number number Zero just became three, and then when it executes the next command, it put in four from the value of the temp, and now it'll loop back up and increment current by one. It's current now max now, and it keeps doing this. And you can use the stepping function, that's an F10 in Visual Studio, to run. And you'll notice I've now gone back to the outside loop. I'm redoing the inside loop again, over and over again, and we will eventually get. On the final um, list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, four, seven, seven. And you um, using that step function F10 will allow you to help debug your code and see what's working and what's not. So we have implemented a simple version of bubble sort in using an integer array in C sharp. There's lots of places where you can improve this algorithm to make it end early and things like that deal with dynamically expanding sizes of the um, quantity of numbers that you're going to sort and sort other types of things like strings. Uh, those we can cover at some future time.